This is Contemporary Black Voices, and we're back again for our final uh, segment. Uh, before we really get started, uh, we've used this uh, time to be able to acknowledge and say to our producers, uh, Carl uh, Booker of Vista Products, as well as Linnell Taylor, and being someone who's working with us as well. She's producing this show today, and she's doing a fine job, and we want to thank her. We also want to say that uh, for the lovely Dr. Sharon Michael Chadwell and Fred Williams, we hope that you're back soon. We really miss you, and we would like you back uh, to be able to contribute to the show. As we uh, were talking about, mm -hmm. we want to say or ask the question, you were talking about our blacks as a entity are we diluted with the organizations that we have well yeah i mean no not 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 diluted but i, I was wondering if our power was diluted and so, okay uh if, if there were too many organizations and and and, and we're, we're and the fact that those organizations aren't coordinating uh are we losing that kind of that concentration of power that synergy and so uh, some people would say that we're over-organized instead of being under-organized, under-organized, organized, organ, organized. So, uh, organized. Organized. so my, 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 my um, you know, and again, we need to do a deep dive into that. You know what I'm saying? As a community, that's one of the conversations that we need to have. Um, the other conversation, again, is, like I say, I, the onus is on us. You know what I mean? Um, we have to step up. Nobody wants to hear that they're a bad parent, but you got to step up and you have to uh, encourage reading as much as you encourage participation in football. Buy more books than you buy basketballs. Um, you know what I mean? It, it's, 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 again, it, we as a community, what do we value? If you want to know what the future is of black America, our future is what we value. It's what we uh, emphasize, is what we focus on. And in a country uh, like this, like America, uh, that focuses, uh, it focuses on one thing. America understands one thing, and that's economics. You're a smart guy, Caleb. Mm -hmm. I I'm gonna ask you a question. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to answer it or not. Mm -hmm. And I don't wanna, uh, I am putting you on the spot, but I didn't really mean well, to Put do me that. on the spot. Chris. Okay. <laughs> what do black people value? What do black people value? Uh. That is on the spot. Okay, you said put you on the spot. Put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah. you know, um, that's fine. That's fine. Because I, and I, I, people are gonna criticize me. That's fine. I'll take it. I don't, I don't care. But um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story. And so yeah, I, I, I just came. I, I came back from Fletcher, uh, the Graduate School of Global Affairs, and um, I was up there for a residency, and. Um, during this residency, they brought in uh, other other uh, groups that were affiliated with Fletcher, other students and stuff like that. They brought in one that was called Flip Fee. Uh, don't ask me what the first three letters stand for. The, le the last two stand for financial inclusion, uh, Flip Fee. And so uh, they brought in all of these people from all of these central banks, you know, uh, which is kind of like the equivalent to our Federal Reserve. So they brought in all these mid-career professionals that are... A, a part of the uh, Fletcher School for Global Affairs. Uh, and what I saw, we, we, we uh, there were people from all over the world, all over, you know. Uh, what I saw was um, there were a lot of people that came from, from, from Africa as a part of this program. There were people from, don't get me wrong, there were people from Vietnam, people from uh, Lebanon, people from uh, Iraq, Libya. There were people from, you know, Indonesia, Philippines, every, all over the world. The majority of the contingent was from Africa, uh, and the majority of those were African women. So we had a, uh, where all the different people that were there, along with the alumni, and if you, if you know anything about Fletcher, you know how powerful Fletcher alumni is. They're all over the world. They're mover, global movers and shakers, some of the most powerful people in the world. So all the alumni were there, the professors were there, and all of the different people, these different cohorts were there at the same time who were doing their residency. So I'm, 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 I walk in there, and I'm sitting in there, and it's a long banquet hall. And me, I'm lazy. I'm going to go to the first table in the banquet hall. So I go sit, I walk to the banquet hall, go to the first table, and I'm sitting on this, like, this stool, this bar stool. Um, uh, they were like pub tables. So in walks 
this the the contingent from these world from these banks. In leading this contingent were the black women from Africa. Oh wow. And the one at the head of it, she was from Tanzania. She walked in there, she had her hijab on, uh, and she was leading. She was walking at the head of this this entourage of black women. And when I tell you that crowd of movers and shakers <laughs> parted like the Red Sea when them sisters walked through there, they parted. And I'm sitting there looking. And I, 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 I'm telling you, I swear to you, these people didn't know whether to kneel or bow when these sisters walked into that room. Because them sisters walked in there like they owned the place, head held high, and the sister in front. Everything that the world said says should have diminished her power. She was black. She's a woman. She was Muslim enhanced her power. She wore that hijab like she was Marilyn Monroe walking through. And obviously I mean, it made you it was, feel good. It, it was, because I knew what it was when I saw it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I saw it, and I saw the crowd split for these women that walked in there like they owned this place. And I, and I, I, these women walked in there like they were floating. And, I, and right then I, I saw it, and I understood. Once again, it reaffirmed my understanding of the power of black women. Well, let me ask you. Hold on, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm finished making my point. So these sisters walked in there, and what they were wearing was confidence. They knew who they were. They knew what they stood for. They knew their education. They knew their, their they knew their background. They knew their history. They knew their everything. And they they parted a room. And I, we also attended a baseball game together, and they played the music. And the sisters are there, and when they're playing the music, you see the sisters dancing. But there was, uh, you also see, saw what they were wearing. Now, I want to contrast that to what we idolize and glorify here That's and how we, care, carry, how we carry ourselves here. So you contrast that with what's popular here, Sexy Red, Glorilla. And so these are the, 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 the women that our sisters here, the young girls here, emulate, okay? So when you ask me, what do we value here as a society? There's your answer. You understand what I'm saying? So being able to contrast that, they're all black women, but one carries themselves in a way that when they walk in the room, you see God in all her majesty and all her glory. The other one, <laughs> Carries herself in such a way <laughs> where you want to hide your face, hide your daughter, <laughs> don't listen to you know what I mean. And so that that's the difference in what we value, you know what I'm saying, in this country. And so, do we value education? How what's our future look like as a people? And our future looks like what we value and what we emphasize. And once we start emphasizing that first, how we carry ourselves, how we look at each other the dignity that we have, um, then we're going to be okay. Because that first one is about education. Those sisters were educated, central, walked in there, with, they were central bankers. And so once we, our, our kids idolize that and understand that they can be that, and that's how they should be, um, we'll be okay as a people. So again, there's nothing stopping any one of us from picking up a book. There's nothing stopping any one of us from Googling. Google is available to everybody. Everybody has a cell phone. You can Google and gain knowledge. You can go to a library and gain knowledge. You can rip books and gain knowledge. You ain't got to pay for a book. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You can borrow. They have a loan library where you can borrow a book. So when we start valuing knowledge and education as a means to economic advancement, then we'll be okay as a people. And that's my answer to your question. As we close this out, uh, today's topic was the future of the black man in America. Uh, kind of where do we go from here? Our hope is, is that you will comment and you will hit the bell to know because what we would like to do is hopefully you will actively participate in this particular conversation. Tell us what you think. Put in the comments and tell us what you think and what you believe so that we can have a future episode about this and we want to talk and address your comments directly uh, from you uh, that you put in the comments. You also must hit the comment and also hit the bell. I'm going to, uh, before we close out, ask Caleb if he has a final word. No, so I want you guys to make sure you tune in for ne next week. 
there is a phenomenon called uh, the black woman phenomenon, where you have the sisters that are leveling up these white men. And so uh, we are, we're gonna have Dr. Sharon back. Hopefully we'll have Professor Williams back. Hopefully we'll have some guests on the studio. It is gonna be a hell of a show. So make sure you tune into that show next week. Um, and so again, but just uh, stay tuned for hot, we got some really good hot topics coming up too. Yes, we do. Thank you, and we're signing off for Contemporary Black Voices. Please, again, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and leave your comments, and we'll see you next week.